you know, people always, uh, things happen to people, let's put it this way, things happen to people. Somebody's kid gets off the derech, somebody's kid doesn't get married, he doesn't feel spiritual, things go, don't go his way. I don't know, what, what else can you think of? Little bumps of the road. Whatever, right? I don't know. Whatever you guys, all of a sudden you, you, you can, what? Life. Life, yeah, bumps of the road. However, 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 it's always the rabbi's fault. Always the rabbi's fault. Your son or your daughter don't get married? It's the rabbi's fault. Yes, it's the rabbi's fault for not clobbering you over the head when you were doing wrong with your kid. But it's not the rabbi's fault that you, uh, you know, limited your child to very basic activity. You didn't even give any your child any kind of, uh, of responsibility in their lives. When mommy nourished the baby uh, and kind of nursed him until he was uh, way into adulthood, if you know what I mean. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, you don't do that. When mommy never asked the child, uh, can you please uh, do the kitchen? Can you please wash the bathroom? Can you please? Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Mommy will take care of you. Oh, it's always the rabbi's fault. When the rabbi says something, the, the parents would say, well, rabbi, with all the respect, it's my child and I educate him. Okay, fine. You'll educate you, not a problem. When the rabbi comes to you and says, excuse me, why is your son not coming to yeshiva? Well, he has finals. You feel like saying, well, what would your son say in this final day? You gotta think about it. And then you ask your father, the father, father, oh father, how come your son doesn't come to yeshiva anymore? He goes to college, he goes to college. Okay, it's very important. Uh, that the father should teach his son some kind of omnud, something that he will be able to, to provide for himself. Which college is he going to? Oh, uh, he's going to uh, this uh, Jesuit school, or to, uh, you know, he's going to St. John's, or he's going whatever. You know, you go to St. John's, you always see like a crucifix like this, in any corner of the place. Of course, it's the rabbi's fault when your son doesn't keep Shabbat anymore. Of course, it's the rabbi's fault when your son doesn't date Jewish girls anymore. I mean, he dates beautiful, I mean, there's very nice people, nothing against them, honestly. But, you know, what would you say if your son brings home a Korean made a Or Christine, or Jacqueline? Or whatever. It's the rabbi's fault. Rabbi, you haven't done enough. I haven't done enough? I haven't done enough? What do you want me to do? Drink your son that you pay to? Oh, but, oh it's education. So you tell him, why do you send your kids to such a school? Why won't you tell your son, darling, you're going to go to a school, to a Jewish school, you're going to go to a college, but you have to be kovea, your place, natua, be'olea, Torah. I don't care if your college degree takes you instead of four years, take you six years, you're going to be in yeshiva every day. What, what's a big deal? Huh? Oh, your son has to finish. He has to go to work. The son has to go to work. You, uh, I don't know how old are you, 22, 23 years old. You have to be out of the house. You have to be on your own. How, how do you want this child to be out of the house when all the time you get them inside the house? What are you doing to this kid? You nourished him, protected him from everything, and now all of a sudden you're throwing him to the world. Of course he's going to get all bumboozled. But where were you when you sent your kid to, 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 to schools like that? Why didn't you insist on your kid to be, to be a Ben Torah? Why didn't you? But it's the rabbi's fault. You're right. The rabbi paid the bills for you to send your kid to St. John's University and did not insist that your son will come to Yeshua. Yes, it's the rabbi's fault. When the rabbi called, he says, where's the son? He said, yes, finals. But finals takes precedence over everything. It's just the rabbi's fault. It's the rabbi's fault when you were dominating, you were looking at your phone. 
It's the rabbi's fault that you come to shul and you talk lashon hara and you gossip and you 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 desecrate the place. It's the rabbi's fault. The rabbi should come to shul and provide you with entertainment. You like to come to shul to be entertained. You think it's like American has a talent, or you know, the American has idols or whatever. You know, American yeah, American has a lot of idols. But you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what is a reality show? You think to come into a shul is a reality show. The rabbi's job is not to be a clown to stay there and to provide you with entertainment. <coughs> you come into shul, you want to see the talent, and, and this is how you measure it. The chazan has to put up a good show, right? He has to pick up a good tune with a good show for the show. The Baal Kohen has to put up a good show. The rabbi has to put up a good show to give you a speech. It will be a good show. And you sit there like the judge. You go, meh, meh. And for me, it will be a yes. And for me, it will be a no. No way. That, that's a reality show for you. Oh, it's the rabbi's fault. How about your attitude? How about your responsibility? How about your doing? Always, 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 always the rabbis. It's always, and by the way, the rabbi are the ultimate Jew because usually everything becomes the Jewish fault. You know, it, it snows in Africa is the Jewish fault. It's uh, it's a uh, sun heat in Antarctica is the Jewish fault. Everything is the Jewish people's fault. So, but the rabbi is the ultimate Jew. Everything in the world that happened in your house because you messed up your life, because you screwed up your life with your own two hands, it's always the rabbi's fault. You don't understand the role of the rabbis. The role of the rabbis are there to help you. And you complain. Oh, the rabbis put so many restrictions on us. Let us be free. So that's what we start to talk today. Oh, you want to be free? Fine, it's not a problem. Life is a winding road up in the Alps. And you're driving a beautiful Ferrari or a great... Uh, actually, you guys don't deserve driving. I, I do deserve driving Alpha 8C. Oh, I really like this car. You ever seen an Alfa Romeo 8C? I don't know what an 8C. I've seen Alfa Romeo, but I don't know what an 8C is. Well, you look into the 8C. I am. Yes, it's only about 500 made of them. One was really made for me. I never got it. Anyway, <laughs> yes, you're driving on, on, on a top speed because life is never stopping. I mean, you can't slow down. There's, there's, in life, you can't say, excuse me, uh, uh, hello, world, one second, time out. I'm uh, chilling out now. I'm relaxing. Life always goes on. So imagine you in this winding road up and down the mountain without any chance to stop. You take a wrong turn, and I'm not talking making left instead of right. I'm talking coming in the wrong RPM, stepping on the brakes a little too fast, not drifting into the corner. You can't stop, you have to go because there are cars behind you. You know, like, what's in those uh, cars? NASCAR, right? So the, how the job is crazy, then one inside the other. One sneezes or blinks his eyes open, so the whole becomes, you are going like this up the mountain. The only problem is there is a cliff that goes down 2,000 meters, you know, like 6,000 feet all the way down. By the time you're going to reach the bottom, you're going to turn into microbes, it's gonna be so small. So you blame the rabbis. But the rabbi did not bring you to this wall, to the world. He didn't pregnant your mother and bring you to this world. What happened? What happened is very simple. Comes the rabbi, and now he's putting a guard for you, so you won't, so you won't, you should be able to make it. How do they do it? It's very simple. They put a guardrail. Before the guardrail, they put those uh, vibrating uh, lines. Before that, they put a yellow line, so you'll know. They teach you actually how to drive the car. They give you halachot. They put, they mark the RPM. On, the, on, your, on, your, on your dashboard with the red line. They teach you how to do so. So you're coming to a thing. You need to come at a certain speed and a certain uh, momentum. You need to pull the arm brake in a certain spot. And, and you need to do this, one, two, three, and the other, and so on and so forth. All this for what? Not to control your life. To prevent you from doing something very simple. That's called to crash. Crash and burn. 
But the problem is that you don't want to take responsibility for your own lives. You don't want to take responsibility for your own actions. You don't want to understand that the total sum of your life is the total decision in which you have made in your life. It's nobody's fault but yours. It's your fault. What happened to your life is not a matter of luck. There's no such thing as luck. You create your own luck. You create your own journey in your life to make. But since you don't want to do that, you're always going to blame somebody else because the failures, in most people's eyes, the failures are always because of air or belong to somebody else and all the successes are only yours. You never give credit to anybody's success and you always don't, and you never want to receive blame for anything you've done. Here comes the rabbi to tell you, listen, you can't do that. You have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. Because in the Torah world, listen, you know, you made it up, right? you made it up, right? you can't you can always fix that. Certain things that you do, it's gone, it's finished. Time goes on. You can't stop it, rewind it, rewrite it, and, 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 and then fix it like it never happened. Even if you make it a and you made Shuvah for that, the dent is still there. So come home and say to you, listen, you know, you'll have to give a report for that. You can't do that. Let me help you. Let me guide you through that life so you'll be able to reach the final goal, the final line, the end line, right? And you're able to go to the autobahn, to the freeway, to the highway. You'll be able to go in one piece and you actually enjoy it. Let me teach you how to do that. So never blame the rabbi. If this is your attitude, you know, you're missing a big point in your life. And I'm not only talking from a theological point of view. I'm talking to you from a very simple point of view of, of learning how to live life, understanding the role of the rabbis. And of course, yes, as a rabbi, you need to understand that that's what your job. You're not a pastor. You're not a priest. You're not a padre. You're not an imam. You're a rabbi. A rabbi's job, first of all, is to teach, to guide. You are a mentor to somebody's life. You can't go through high school or to, or to whatever yeshiva and then just, you know, push the people out there like you're pushing meat into a grinder and then you're making, you're making chopped meat at the end of the line. No, you can't do that. You have to follow them. You have to care about the person, what will happen with them. I didn't say be attached to the person with an umbilical cord to the rest of your life, but you have to put them in a preparation to propel them in such a way that you'll be able to, to reach its target. And that's your job as a rabbi. Again, if you're not capable of doing so, you're not willing to do such a thing, because that takes a lot of undertaking, there's a lot. So don't become a rabbi, become something else. Become a shoe, a shoe repairman, become a salesman, become a banker, become a lawyer, become anything else, but don't become a rabbi. A rabbi is not even a teacher. A rabbi is teaching, but most of all, the rabbi is a mentor. And you need to be able to have great responsibility and selflessness to become a mentor, because there's no time for you. It's all geared towards the other person. On that, Chazal tells us, Tzadik tamar ifrach ka'eres ba'evalon izge. As much as the fruit of the of the of the of the tamar of the of the uh, of the palm tree uh, is a weak tree and gives all its sweetness to its fruit, by doing so, he makes himself like a eres ba'evalon, like a strong tree. Our strength or your strength depends on your ability to give to others. So therefore, remember that, think about it, and move on.